Hello, this is Anthony from the AbletonCookbook.com, and today we're going to be talking about the limiter effect. Um, the limiter effect is something which I think is sort of misunderstood by some people. It's actually really simple, and I think that's kind of why it's kind of confusing. So at first, why don't we just talk about the different aspects of the limiter effect, what the different controls do, and then I'll show you some examples of how to use it, okay? So first, let's just go ahead and drag the limiter from the browser into the... Uh, this track here. Now usually, just so you know, usually you use the limiter not on an actual particular track, but on the master track. Um, and the reason you do that is the limiting effect, you want it to be applied to the track as a whole and not to any particular track. Um, that's because of, of the effects that I'll tell you about in a second. So a limiter is actually just a compressor. That's all it is. So um, the one difference is that it's basically a compressor with the ratio always set to infinite. And what that means, for those of you that aren't uh, familiar with compression theory, it means that it's going to be the limit that's called the ceiling here is going to be a hard limit. So a lot of times on a compressor, um, once the, what they call it's called a threshold on a compressor, once the uh, volume exceeds that, um, the volume will be reduced by a certain ratio. Um, on a compressor, on a limiter rather, it's just going to always keep it below that or at that volume as opposed to decreasing it by a certain amount. So this is called the knee sometimes, um, and this is on a on a com actual compressor, it's variable, but on a limiter, it's fixed. So that's what um, this this control here is called the ceiling. So it sets the decibel at which the um, at which the the compression sets in, the, the limiting sets in. Uh, stereo right here is two modes. So stereo is going to take the cumulative signal of both left and right and, and limit that. And the other option is left and right being uh, uh, limited separately. Um, gain is going to give you a little bit of gain boost before the compression, before the limiting effect. Um, and we'll talk about how to use that in a second. This, uh, this uh, meter right here is going to show you how much the effect is being limited. So you'll see a little uh, uh, light start here at the top and actually move down. So what it's gonna do is show how much the signal is being pressed down. Um, the release, look ahead is gonna basically be how much time um, the, the how much time in, ha in advance, by how much in advance the limiter looks ahead. So what that does is it, it, it allows it to compress quicker. This happens if you have um, if you want this to be a little bit longer, if you have really short uh, bursts of, of high volume, since the whole idea of a limiter is to smooth out those sorts of jumps in volume. Um, unfortunately, the longer it is, the more distortion you're going to get because it basically just takes more CPU to, um, to, to the, the processing is a little bit more intense. And then the release, just like a, just like a regular compressor, you can set the time... Um, about you could set how much time it takes for the the effect to be taken off the the signal. So um, usually I keep it on auto. I haven't noticed any real reason to have it um, manually done. Uh, you might want to exp uh, experiment with it yourself, but I think the auto setting works really well. So um, once again, remember this is always going to go at the end of the master chain. Okay, after all the other effects, because a lot of other effects are going to add gain in some way, either through distortion or whatever. Um, so the limiter, you don't want all that stuff afterwards. So um, now that we've talked about that a little bit, why don't we uh, show you some examples of how to use a limiter. Um, we just went over some uh, a little explanation of what a limiting effect does. Uh, and now I'm going to show you uh, an example in the context of just one drum loop. Um, so this is, this is a... Um, this is an easier way to sort of grasp what the limiter does. Usually it's applied to an entire track, but in this case, just for the purposes of illustration, we'll do it just on one drum loop. So the purpose of a limiting effect is to raise the overall perceived volume of a, um, of a track by, by lowering the volume spikes. And this allows you to have a louder um, track without clipping it. So um, why don't we go ahead and listen to this drum loop really quickly. 
So there's a drum loop that you surely recognize from about one trillion uh, remixes in the last, I don't know, God knows how long. Um, and so you can see, though, that if you play this, at, this is a relatively comfortable volume, you can get a lot of clipping on the right. And the reason for that is if you look at the clip itself, so remember that you can switch from device view, which we're in now, to clip view using shift tab. Um, like most drum hits, or drum loops rather, you're gonna have spikes on the twos and the fours with the clap or snare sound. Um, and you can see that in this case, it actually, they're a lot higher than the ones and the threes, which would be the kicks for the most part, as well as this little hit. So this little hit is actually not as loud as the, this like horn thing, is not as loud as the claps, so. So one way that you can do this is you can basically, you can apply the limiter, and we're gonna do it just to this track, but remember in actual usage it would be on the master track. Um, and first of what we'll do is we will lower the ceiling until we don't get any clipping. It's almost immediately you get rid of the clipping. And see, if you look right here, you can see the light is actually bouncing down on the twos and the fours. And that's because it's, it, those are the loudest parts of the of the break, so it's going to be uh, limiting more on those. So there we go. Now, however, we basically just all we're doing really is is uh, we haven't actually raised the overall volume whatsoever. So once we've prevented the clipping, what we can do is we can go ahead and add some gain. And now we can see that actually this this uh, light is bouncing quite a bit more because it's actually having to limit more of the um, more of the break because more of the since the overall volume has been boosted, more of that break is going to be hitting the ceiling, including the ones now. Which, if you'll remember, were the second uh, loudest part of the break. So, uh, what we've done is if you listen to this, especially that hit, um, listen to that hit as compared to the unlimited version. So not only is the limited version perceived to be slightly louder, it's also not clipping. So um, this is a way, like I said, you're able to add to the perceived volume of the clip or track or whatever without actually clipping it, um, without actually just raising the gain with a utility or with the uh, fader or something. So just uh, to illustrate that, why don't we're going to bounce this clip into this track right here uh, through a little process called resampling. So if you set any track to resample, um, it takes as its input the master track, so the entire track. Um, so we're going to resample this clip into this track right here so we can see the difference in the waveform. So let's go ahead and do that. Shorten this to the same size. Now, just look at the the difference in the just the the appearance of the of the waveform. So, this is the limited version, and this is the unlimited version. And you can see that the volumes of every part of the break are a lot more even in the limited version than they are in the unlimited version. In fact, it's not even to the top of the clip, so we can actually even boost it if we wanted to do that. Um, so this, is, uh, this, this uniformity of volume is, however, purchased at the price of the, um, the dynamic variation. So this is why limiting is kind of often, um, 
when people have discussions about the loudness wars, which is kind of the ongoing one-upsmanship uh, of making tracks louder, limiting is a, a prime culprit because basically you're able to just boost the sound, the perceived volume of the track so much that you, but you lose a lot of the subtlety that um, you might have that, that might there might be because of those variations in sound. Um, for example, if you if you drag a track from you know any any sort of commercial dance producer into Tractor or into Ableton, you'll notice that their tracks are usually kind of just one big furry, worm-looking caterpillar line. And the reason is that there's no sharp jumps in volume because they've been limited so much. So um, that is the uh, benefit and the danger of limiting. And hopefully this um, this guide to this sort of unglamorous effect uh, will help you. It's a really good way to add some so, some volume boost uh, to your tracks without clipping it all over the place. So hopefully this helps. Um, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave me a comment on the blog or on the Twitter. Either way, and I hope to speak with you soon. Bye.